Welcome to today's video, I'm Prof. Omar. Today we're going to discuss Putnam 2019 number B2. And this is a problem that involves a sum of trigonometric functions and asks for a limit involving them. So we'll let an be this sum right over here. It goes from 1 to n minus 1 of this trig function in terms of sine divided by the squares of these cosines. Maybe a quick observation, the coefficient beside pi over 2 here is the sum of the coefficients in these ones here. And it asks us to find the limit as n approaches infinity of a n over n cubed. All right, so the process we're going to go through to do this is the following. We're going to change all our trigonometric functions so that they're all in terms of the sine function. So to do that, we're going to change the index by swapping k and n minus k. And that won't do anything to this sum because the sum goes from 1 to n minus 1. So 1 will become n minus 1 and n minus 1 will become 1. So we'll have the same sum but it'll change these arguments here into things in terms of the sine function. Secondly, once we have everything in terms of the sine function, this is a perfect example of a type of problem where using asymptotics to understand what's going on by analyzing power series actually helps you develop an understanding of what the limit ought to be. So the way we're gonna do that is think about the Taylor series expansion of sine for small values of x. All of these values are gonna be between zero and pi. And so sine of x looks really close to x is just off by an order of x squared here. So we're going to use that and then exploit that with asymptotics to actually figure out what the answer to this is. So if you want, give this a try, change things in terms of sine, and look at this asymptotics to approximate sine x by x for these general values and see what you can come up with. Okay, so let's address this first issue of interchanging k and n minus k and seeing what happens to each of these values. So here, our sine will change to twice n minus k minus 1 pi over 2n, which is the sine of, we have a 2n pi, so we'll get a pi out here, and then we'll have a negative 2k and a negative 2. So I'll make that a minus of the quantity 2k plus 1 pi over 2n. Okay, and sine of pi minus an angle is sine of that angle. So this becomes sine of 2k plus 1 pi over 2n. All right, so let's look at these cosines. So when we interchange k for n minus k in, let's take this one because it just has a little bit of a simpler expression. This becomes cosine of n minus k pi over 2n, and this is cosine of, now pi over 2 is the first coefficient, is n pi divided by 2n, minus k pi over 2n, which now actually becomes the sine of k pi over 2n. Okay, so this will turn into a 2k plus 1 instead of a 2k minus 1, and in the denominator, this cosine squared pi k pi over 2n becomes sine squared k pi over 2n. And we'll have the same phenomenon that happened here with this cosine with this cosine as well. So what I'm going to do is insert these three here and change our expression to be in terms of these things right over here and what changes for this cosine as well. Okay, so we've rewritten this expression here in terms of sines. So what I want to do now is analyze the type of situation we have going on, which looks like something like this sine of alpha over n, if we take alpha to be these values right over here, because k doesn't exceed n minus 1, these all values are all between 0 and n. So if we look at the expansion of this power series, it looks something like this. And we can factor out an alpha over n to get 1 plus. Now the terms that we have, alpha over n, are all smaller than 1. And we're multiplying by pi, so we're in 0 and pi. So we'll use this approximation to say this is going to be on the order of alpha over squared over n squared. So this is notation to say that whatever left over is going to be at most a constant times this fraction here. And the reason we actually get this, you can get by doing something like Taylor's remainder theorem to see how far alpha over n is as an estimate of sine alpha over n. But I wanted to see this in terms of this expression here. All right, so we can do a similar analysis, actually, to say that alpha over n is sine of alpha over n times 1 plus big O of alpha squared over n squared as well. 
So the idea is to think about this thing as its own series. So what you can do is think about reciprocating all of the entries right over here. So sine of alpha over n is alpha over n times the series that is the inverse of whatever series this is. And that inverse series is going to look like 1 plus something on the order of a squared n squared as well. The reason being that when we take this series, whatever it is, we're going to have 1 plus, well, we actually know explicitly what it looks like, so let's write it down. It looks like 1 minus um, alpha squared over n squared times something plus alpha to the fourth over n to the fourth times something else, etc. So when we expand this out as an actual series, we can multiply by these and compare coefficients. The first term is going to be a 1. We won't have any alpha over n term because we need a 0 here for that. Then we get some constant times alpha squared over n squared appearing so that this cancels out with this. We actually get the same constant that we had before with a plus, and then some higher order terms. So, in conclusion, we also have a similar relationship between what alpha over n is in terms of sine alpha over n. Now, the reason to do this is because we can now asymptotically replace all of these signs with these terms here. The numerator we can replace with the alpha over n. And these denominators, unfortunately, have the sign on the bottom, but we can use this to flip them over. So what I'm going to do is write these estimates over here in the corner and then use them to analyze a term of the sum. All right, so peeling off a term of the sum in the numerator, we're going to have our alpha being this entire thing right over here. So we get this as 2k plus 1 pi over 2n times 1 plus big O of, I'm going to write this as alpha squared over n squared, where alpha is this constant right over here that doesn't involve the n. Okay, now in the denominator, I'm going to think about this as a 1 over sine of whatever we're working with. Now by this analysis that we did here, the 1 over sine can be replaced with an n over alpha. So here we can rewrite this piece as being n over our whatever alpha we have. Our alpha is going to be this thing. So we'll have 2 over k plus 1 pi all squared times 1 plus big O of, I don't want to use the same alpha, so I'll call that corresponding coefficient beta and make this beta 1 plus the order of beta squared over n squared. And then similarly with this third thing, we'll have 2 over k pi squared times 1 plus big O of another term over n squared. And the key here is that the alpha, beta, and gamma are things that are linear in k and not as big as n. Now, when we multiply all these out, I'm going to take the squares and put them inside. We'll have this 2 canceling with one of these 2s to give us an 8 in the numerator. We have pi to the fourth in the denominator and a pi in the numerator to give us pi cubed. And then we have the expression 2k plus 1 over k plus 1 squared, k squared, and then multiplied by all of these order estimates. Now, when we multiply all of these, we're going to get a 1 plus the quadratic term, which is the sum of these three terms when you do the expansion. Since alpha, beta, and gamma are all linear in terms of k, this first coefficient is going to be alpha squared plus beta squared plus gamma squared plus a constant at most. So this is going to be at most a constant times the square of k. So we can represent this as something on the order of k squared over n squared. Again, using the fact that k is relatively small to n. Okay, and I did forget the n squareds here, which is important. They're in these denominators. So we do get an n cubed factor in the numerator as well. Okay, so if we expand this, each term is going to look like 8 over pi cubed times 2k plus 1 over k plus 1 squared, k squared, times n cubed, plus whatever this estimate is when we multiply these out. Let's see what this is on the order of. This is on the order of k squared, n squared. 
Here, in terms of k, we have this linear factor, and then we have this fourth power, so we get a 1 over k cubed. So here we'll have a k on the denominator, and then we have this n cubed and this n squared, so we'll have something on the order of n over k. So here is the asymptotics of our general term of this series. And so what we're going to do now is take this and add all the terms up and see what we get. Okay, so here's our a sub n with the replacement that we did with each of the terms. Now, our goal is to find the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n over n cubed. So we'll divide this n cubed out. Here, we'll get this expression over here. And then here, we'll get 1 over kn squared. All right, so first let's analyze this term here. So this term is going to be 1 over n squared times the sum of these reciprocals, 1 plus 1 over 2 plus up to 1 over n minus 1, times a constant. We have this big O notation here saying this is less than or equal to a constant times this. Now, this can be approximated in many ways. If you just happen to know what the approximation is, that's fine. You can think about this as a sum involving 1 over x, a bunch of terms from 1 over x. So this can be approximated using something like the integral test by this integral, which is log. So this is roughly a constant times log n. So this entire sum is on the order of log n over n squared. And as n goes to infinity, this actually goes to 0. So this entire term disappears in the limit. So the only thing that we're actually really interested in is this sum right over here. All right, so let's analyze it. This sum is 8 over pi cubed times the sum k equals 1 to n minus 1 of this quantity here. And we should have a big hint here. This quantity here is k squared plus 2k plus 1. This is k squared. So their difference is actually this numerator right over here. As a consequence, we can represent this as the sum k equals 1 to n minus 1 of 1 over k squared minus 1 over k plus 1 squared. OK, and now you notice that this sum is going to telescope. We'll have 1 over 1 squared minus 1 over 2 squared, and then 1 over 2 squared minus 1 over 3 squared, so the 1 over 2 squared is canceled, then 1 over 3 squared minus 1 over 4 squared, so the 1 over 3 squared is canceled, etc. So the only thing we're left with is this first term, which is a 1, minus the last term, which is 1 over n squared. OK, so that's what this term is here in asymptotics. We want to know what happens as n goes to infinity. This term here goes to 0, and so we're left with 8 over pi cubed as our final answer. So one thing I really like about this problem is even though it's kind of rigorously hard to write it up, you get a sense of what is actually going on in the limit. That's the thing we care about. And we did this by really exploiting estimates that you can get using power series expansions. This is a really powerful way to find limits in general if you don't know what limits are, especially when you're using a bunch of trigonometric functions. So a perfect example of a follow-up problem that you can try to test this understanding is try to find the limit as x approaches 0 of this entire expression here. And the idea, again, is to use power series expansions to get a sense of what's going on with each of the terms, eliminating the terms that don't dominate the expressions. So give this a try and leave your thoughts about it in the comments. What kind of things did you try? What did you tackle? Did things work out? And what answer did you possibly get? So thanks for watching today's video. If you liked it, definitely click the like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel.